Yes, it is true. Congress is currently talking about an increase to Social Security beneficiaries of $485 per month. And no, this is not a trick. This is actually a new bill by John Larson. He has proposed this in the past. This was something that he proposed back in 2021. He reintroduced it in 2022. And again, he reintroduced this same bill in 2023. The good news is that it now has more support today than it did in 2021 and in 2022. So this could mean some big changes are coming. Now, we're gonna get to all this in just a second. All I ask is if you enjoy these daily uploads, do me a favor, go ahead, smash that like button. Also consider subscribing so you never miss an update. But here's what we're going to cover. Today's video, we're going to cover what is happening to Social Security. It's all about Social Security. First, how could Social Security recipients get an additional $485 a month? This would be big. Well, it's actually quite simple. Congress has pinpointed many flaws to Social Security. One of the flaws that they've pinpointed, which is a major problem, it is that beneficiaries that have worked for a very low income, uh, low paying job for the majority of their, their work life for the past 30 years, they are getting a minimum benefit of $897 a month. And think about how quickly $897 a month would go for you. Could you pay for your rent? Could you pay for food? Could you pay for your vehicle? Could you pay for insurance or your cell phone? Maybe you like to watch YouTube. Can you pay for internet? How quickly would $897 go? Think about this. Because for years, lawmakers have been saying that keeping Social Security recipients under the federal poverty line doesn't make any sense because we are giving them a benefit and that benefit that we're giving them is keeping them in poverty. Now at the same time, Congress has not switched from this until now, possibly, because right now the plan is to raise the minimum benefit to 125% of the federal poverty line. Right now that means a raise would equal about $485 per month. This is if you are getting the minimum benefit. You'd go from 897 to over, uh, over $1,200, $1,300 that you would see an increase of. That's big. Now, this proposal is called the Social Security 2100 Act. Again, it was first introduced in 2021. It's been reintroduced, well, multiple times, but mainly two more times since then. And I can't tell you whether or not this bill is going to pass, but what I can tell you is that, for as far as Social Security is concerned, I can tell you what lawmakers are looking at and what President Biden is looking at as well. So, let's talk about Social Security. And again, if you can and you haven't done so already, make sure you do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. It just gets this video out there to more people so that more people can see and understand what is happening at this time. Because I know Social Security is not being talked about by the masses. However, there's over 60 million people that receive this and they rely and they count on this money just to get them through. So here's what I can tell you. Over the past couple of weeks, really, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions and people have been asking for some answers. Some of them are asking, what are lawmakers looking for? What should we expect? What should we be looking for as far as us looking into lawmakers? Well, I'll address that. What is President Biden hoping to see? What is he hoping to see as far as the economy is concerned? And how could the Fed alter the course of Social Security? And you're probably thinking the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with Social Security. However, they do play a major role in Social Security's revenue that comes in. And I want to address why that is. So here's what I can tell you. These are the things that we need to be well aware of. What is happening right now within our economy and around the world, but also could it ultimately impact future legislation for Social Security? The answer is yes. So here's something. First, if the U.S. ends up in a recession, 
This is one of the questions I received just the other day. Would this be good news or bad news for social security recipients? And I thought this was a great question because we could actually find some truth to both good news and bad news if the US ends up in a recession. I've talked about this in the past, but experts anticipate a US recession would be bad news. It'd be more bad news than good, but why? Well, according to these experts, they say lawmakers would push for additional relief only if the US ended up in a recession while still experiencing high inflation. If the US ends up in a recession, but inflation is down at two to 3%, we will be fine because lawmakers can then go and pass legislation to provide additional support and relief. But if inflation is still high, we're not gonna get anything like a stimulus check. It's just not gonna happen. Experts are warning that inflation is the key to everything in 2023 and 2024. If we end up in a recession, then Congress must pass legislation that will help get us out of it. But the legislation that gets passed, it can't provide upward pressure on inflation. So automatically that takes an increase to social security right off the table. We cannot see an increase to social security. Okay. And you're probably thinking, well, didn't you just talk about the social security 2100 act? Yes, I did. The social security 2100 act does increase uh, the minimum benefit amount. However, that does not mean that uh, 60 million people are going to receive an increase of you know, $485 a month. That's not what that means because not everybody is getting paid the minimum benefit amount. But if we have to provide additional benefits to social security, we could do that in the event we do not have inflation, but also Congress would have to come to an agreement and cut spending elsewhere. And I will talk about that in just a moment because that is where President Biden steps in. I'll get to that in just a second. But what we do know, any bill that would provide immediate relief to uh, the American people, whether it's to Social Security recipients, to you know student borrowers, to whoever, right, just children or family, this would pretty much get put on the back burner until we got inflation under control. Because experts predict lawmakers would propose many bills, but nothing would really benefit the American people until three to six months of economic pain. So that's what they're expecting is we're going to be feeling three to six months of economic pain of, you know, job loss, okay, of defaulting on bills. We are going to go through that for three to six months first, and then maybe we get something because after three to six months, inflation could come down substantially because we got no money to spend. And then at that point, we could potentially see uh, you know, the Fed turn things around, start to lower rates. We go and spend a little bit more. People start, or businesses start hiring people once again. This could be good news. But again, this could come after three to six months of some economic pain. But how does this impact Social Security? Well, economic pain for three to six months will likely mean there's less people working, right? Companies are not bringing in as much money, they're laying people off, and as less people are working, that means the social security tax that is collected actually is less, which means that if this takes too long, right, and we are feeling this economic pain for quite a while, social security recipients continue to get their payments. We will likely see social security um, you know, as far as the, the money going out is going to increase because more people are going to start collecting benefits sooner, especially if the job that they were working at just laid them off. So again, this would actually speed up the insolvency date. This would be a major concern. However, here's where President Biden does get involved and potentially make things better for Social Security recipients. So could he do something? Yes and no. Right now, President Biden is, is hoping that Congress can come together, pass a massive social security reform bill, tax the wealthy, and this would solve social security's problems for the next 75 plus years, right? 
that's what they're that's what he's hoping however I think we can all agree, uh, based off all the statements lawmakers have made, based off what experts have been telling us, Republicans would never go for this. This is something that will never get passed, especially with the Republican majority in the House of Representatives. But what can happen, and how President Biden actually steps in and could improve Social Security, is by dropping a couple promises. President Biden made a few promises, okay? He talked about nobody making less than $400,000 per year would pay a penny more in taxes, right? If President Biden were to drop this promise, it would make Congress's job much easier. He's also promised a $200 uh, per month raise to Social Security recipients. I think at this point, we can almost just stop talking about that because I don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening. And then one of his other promises. President Biden promised that uh, he, he would provide student loan forgiveness to borrowers that uh, have up to $20,000 in student loan debt that make under, I believe, $125,000 per year, all this different stuff, right? Well, if President Biden were to consider signing the Republican proposed bill that blocked all student loan forgiveness, which he just vetoed last week, Congress could actually use this as a bargaining chip. And on top of that, Congress must act within the, the confines of the debt ceiling bill that put a 1% increase uh, on government spending, okay, or an increased cap on government spending for fiscal year 2024. So they have to do all this stuff within the confines of that bill, okay? Now, here's the thing. Nobody believes that Social Security reform is going to be addressed alongside of the, the federal funding bill for fiscal year 2024, and for good reason. Right now, Representative Patty Murray and Senator Susan Collins, they're actually planning on working together to propose a, a more bipartisan but transparent uh, appropriations bill. They want to make sure it is transparent, and they want to do so by the end of this month. So we are already, it is currently uh, June 12th, so we have you know, a little more than half the month to go. The plan is they're gonna have it by the end of this month. Their goal is to be extremely transparent so that lawmakers can quickly decide whether they can support this bill or not. And if not, then the two lawmakers would spend their July recess making changes and hopefully satisfy the majority of Congress. But again, it all starts now. The, the reason why President Biden is a key factor here, other than just being the president and the leader of pretty much all Democrats, the reason why he's a key factor here is because if he were to drop his promises of anybody making less than $400,000 per year would never pay a penny more in taxes, guess what? Then Congress could then go and pass something like the, the Social Security 2100 Act where they would actually tax people that are making, let's say $250,000, $400,000 per year. They'd tax them that social security tax. Right now it's $160,200 per year. That's where you're paying your social security income tax, okay? But anything over $160,200 per year, you do not have to pay taxes on that as far as social security tax. That's what lawmakers are looking at. Also, if President Biden just stopped the student loan forgiveness plan that he has and says, okay, Republicans, you know, I admit, you know, that was, that was a long shot. We tried it. It's not going to work. But let's actually pass something for the student loans, for student loan borrowers. Let's help them out a little bit. If we can't help them all out, let's help out a small percentage of them. And by doing so, we are going to do something for you. We are going to uh, you know, allow Republicans, or we're gonna side with Republicans on certain bills. We are going to find a, a bipartisan compromise. That's the only way this is gonna work. And this is why um, Representative Patty Murray and Senator Susan Collins are working together, because honestly, if lawmakers are not working together, there is a very slim chance we see anything done for Social Security in the near future. So. So we know at this time, that is all I have as far as an update as far as Social Security is concerned. So 
If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I will see you guys on the next one.